Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing out there on tonight? This is the day that the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. I hope and pray that your week is going fine. Hope you're doing well. Hope the family is well. Do me a favor and click the share button on your page. Amen. Share this page to your timeline so that others can be blessed by what God is going to share with us on tonight. Call somebody up, text somebody, and let them know to join us on tonight. Right now, God has a blessing. Amen. In store for us on this evening. As we come together on Tonight, amen, we want to be in prayer for persons who stand in need of it. And so we continue to lift up Trustee McDaniel, Sister Maria Williams, Brother Robert Dixon, Sister Sadie Johnson, Sister Alma Burgess, Sister Rosetta Randall, Sister Antoinette Crawley Gray's daughter, and Deaconess Caldwell, amen. We also lift up those persons who are listed on our bulletin, amen, we believe in the power of prayer. We recognize, we understand that God is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God that healeth thee. And so if you believe in the power of prayer, would you bow with me at this time as we go to the Lord? Oh Lord, how we love you, how we praise you, how we lift your name on high. We thank you once again, God, for being with us all throughout this day. We give you the highest praise. We recognize, God, that you are great and that you're greatly to be praised. We come on tonight, God, as intercessors, as priests, calling on your name for those persons who are sick, those persons who are ill at this particular time, we believe, God, that you're still a healer. We believe that there's still yet a bomb in Gilead. And so we call on your name on tonight. Yes, God, we plead the blood of Jesus over each and every name that has been called on this evening, asking you to have mercy upon them, asking you, God, to heal their body. Whatever the ailment is, God, we're asking you to take the pain away. We're praying even now for a good report for those who will be going to the doctor. We pray, God, that you'll bring healing to their body so that when they get to the doctor, they'll find that all is well. We thank you that nothing is too hard for you. We bless you because we know that all things are possible. And so we just ask you, God, to step into their situation. Lay your hands on them. You are the doctor in the sick room. You are the great physician. You are the great I am. So have your way, God, in their lives right now. Surround them with your love. Grant them the faith that they need to get through this hour in their life. We thank you, God, that you're healing their body even now. You're helping them, God, to recover. Strengthen them even now, God, no matter what they're facing, no matter what they're dealing with, we're asking you to bless them with hope from on high. And then, God, we come on tonight, God, uh, looking for a word, looking for you to feed us, amen, with your bread uh, from heaven. So anoint me afresh to be a blessing to your people on tonight, to those who are watching, to those who are listening. God, we lift them up to you as well. We're asking you to be Jehovah Jireh for them. Whatever they stand in need of, we're asking you to provide it. And we come against fear at this very time. We come against doubt. Amen. Knowing, God, that you will work things together for their good. So we bless you. We praise you. We lift your name on high. And it's in the name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Come on, put those hands together 
Amen. Right there in your living room, right there in your bedroom. Come on, give God praise. If the Lord has been good to you, amen. If the Lord has been kind, if he's been faithful, come on, right where you are, give God, amen, some glory and some honor on tonight. I want you to turn back with us to Genesis chapter 26. This has been an awesome series. We're talking about resolving conflict. Amen. We need it in this world. Amen. Just saw on the news, amen, this week at Michigan State University, someone going up there on campus, amen, uh, shooting and killing people, injuring people. We got to learn, amen, the godly way uh, to resolve conflict. And so, uh, people have been telling me how much they've been blessed by this series, and so we want to continue the series on tonight. We need you to grab, amen, your tablet, grab paper, pen, pencil, whatever it is, and jot down these notes. I'm telling you, if you apply what God is sharing with us, oh my God, you will be tremendously blessed of the Lord. How many of y'all been blessed so far by this series? Wave at me. Amen. Write something on the screen. Uh, write the point or the points that have resonated with you thus far. Amen. Amen. Do that for me. Don't forget on this coming Sunday, pastor's anniversary, pastor and people, pastor and his family, we're looking forward to celebrating 17 years. And so, Providence, we want you to come out, amen, grab somebody, bring them with you as we look to celebrate, amen. My sister, amen, will be here in ministry uh, for us on Sunday, uh, Reverend Dr. Deborah Martin, amen, out of Richmond, Virginia, 10 o'clock worship experience, come out and be blessed. We are sure enough looking forward to to it, haven't had a chance to celebrate like this in a while due to the pandemic, and so let's come together on this coming Sunday and bless the name of the Lord, amen, for allowing us 17 years together as pastor and people, amen, amen. So we want to continue on tonight. with this story about Isaac and how Isaac and his men dug some wells and they got into some arguments, if you will, got into clash. There was some strife between Isaac's herdsmen and these herdsmen that were in Gerar, Philistine territory. And so we talked about the last time how you got to know when it's time to move on. Yeah, stop clashing, stop the strife, stop uh, the conflict. We, we got to learn how to move on to the next place. We talked about how oftentimes separation will resolve the situation the disagreement, the discord, the friction, the hostility. And so instead of going back and forth all the time, I like the fact that the text says that Isaac moved on from there. Whenever there was a fight, a breakout, amen, strife, hostility, Isaac didn't waste any more time there arguing, fussing. No, it said that Isaac moved on from there. I, I love it because you have to have discernment when it comes to resolving conflict. What's the best way to squash things? What's the best way uh, to bring things or nip things in the bud. And so, 
our next point that we want to share with you uh, on this evening is that you have to understand that you must serve as a model for others around you. Write that down. You got to serve as a model for others around you. Look, look at it. Isaac, if you will, he's the leader, and he has some uh, people working for him. Yeah, he, he's got some herdsmen. Amen. And, and his herdsmen are arguing with uh, the herdsmen of Gerar. They, they are going back and forth. They, they have this clash. Isaac's herdsmen would dig a well, and here comes the herdsmen of Gerar, and, and they are hostile towards Isaac's herdsmen. But I love the fact that it says at some point in time, Isaac decided that it was time to move on. Go, go back and look at it. A amen. It, it says they quarreled over the whale. Amen. But at some particular time, it says that Isaac moved on from there. I love it. I love it. I Isaac understands that that he is the leader, that, that he has some employees, if you will. He has some people who are connected to him, that works for him. And so Isaac says, look, I, I have to serve as a model or as an example for others around me. I, I have to teach them, amen, the proper way as it relates to how you resolve, how you handle conflict, how you handle hostility, a amen. He, he says, I am uh, the CEO, if you will. They are my employees. And, and, and I got to serve as an example. I have to set the standard as to how you deal with conflict in the proper way. I love that. I love that. Be because what we have to understand is that it's not just about us. So that we can't say we can't do whatever we want to because we have other people connected to us. We have other people, amen, watching us. Yeah, and so we have to make sure that, that we're going about things in a godly way in order to, to, to put forth the proper example or standard for other people to follow. I, I love it. See, see, there comes a time where, where you have to cease <laughs> with the bickering, with, with, the, with the fighting and the fussing. There, there comes a time where you have to do what's necessary in order for you to serve as the proper example so that other people who are connected to you can see the example. Watch this, because some lessons are taught, but then other lessons are caught. Oh, what, what do you mean by that? I can, I can teach you a lesson. Amen, like I'm doing on tonight. A amen, I'm teaching you. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you, amen, words, amen, that, that will be of help to you. I I'm teaching you on tonight so, so that some lessons are taught. Amen. Uh, uh, 
but, but then there are other lessons that are caught. That, 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 that simply means that there are some lessons, amen, that, that I learn based on what I see. Yeah, I may not hear a voice, but I may see somebody in action, and as a result of what I see, amen, I catch the lesson, amen, that God has for me. Oh, my God. That, that's, what, that's what Isaac is doing when he moves on to another place. When, when he decides to leave one place, to leave the arguing, to leave the bickering, to leave the hostility, to leave the conflict, he, he's, he's, he's giving uh, a standard or a model that, that, that his herdsmen can follow based upon what they see. So, 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 so that now they know that there are times where you simply have to move on to the next place. They, they understand now that, that there comes a time where you got to stop quarreling and stop fighting and, and stop clashing. And, and in order to resolve the conflict, they, they now understand they now understand, based upon the model that they've been given by Isaac, that you simply have to go on to the next place. There, there has to be some separation. Because oftentimes separation will resolve the situation. And, and so we, we, we have this paradigm oh, that we are given in in the text, you, you got to be careful. You got to be mindful uh, of how you handle conflict. Because your children are watching. Oh, my God. And oftentimes, we do what we're exposed to. Oh, I love it. Yeah, you, you got to be careful what you do around people who are connected to you because oftentimes people do what they are exposed to. So if they see you arguing, they see you fussing, they see you cussing, they see you fighting, they'll have that as a model as to how you handle conflict. Oh, my God. Same thing. If you're on the job, you have to be careful. In particular, if you are in a leadership role. Yeah. If you are a manager, if, if you are the principal, if you are the teacher, amen, you have to be mindful of how you handle conflict because there are other people, guess what, with their eyes on you. Uh, and you don't ever want to get to the point where somebody uses the wrong model or example that you have set. Amen. And, and then you try to correct their behavior but then they refer back to the model or the example that you set. Well, you did it. <laughs> uh, yeah, when so-and-so came at you, that's how you handle it. So you got to be careful, amen, pointing your finger at folk and rolling your eyes and sucking your teeth because people, amen, are watching that kind of stuff. Even in the church, you, you have to be careful of how you handle conflict, how you deal with strife, because I do want to let you know on, on tonight, amen, there is conflict in the church. 
Uh, don't get it twisted. No, don't, don't, don't think it's all love in the church. Don't, don't think it's all amen, compassion, and understanding, and, and, and respect in the church. No, there, there, there are some people, amen, that you're going to deal with in the house of the Lord who are going to be hostile towards you, who are going to clash with you, who, who are going to disagree with you. And you got to make sure that you're handling things in the proper way, especially if you are a leader because you serve as a model to the people around you. To the people in, in your ministry, to the people, amen, on your pew, you serve as a paradigm, as an example, so that you have to set the right standard for other people to follow. So Isaac said, it's, it's time for us to move on from here. This is the way you handle conflict. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you got to separate uh, from the hostility, from the disagreement. Uh, in order to resolve the situation, sometimes you got to move on, oh my God, from the strife and the clashing that's going on. And so that's the first thing that we want to cover on tonight, the next thing is this, very important, amen, and that is you have to seek help from above. You have to seek help from above, church. In verse number 25, it says, Isaac built an altar. Isaac built, look, look at it, y'all. Isaac built an altar. He was intentional. He didn't say he built a house. <laughs> no, he said he built an altar there. And watch this. He called on the name of the Lord. Hmm. Look, look at it. Isaac built an altar there. He was intentional. That altar represents worship. That altar represents prayer. Uh, he was intentional about getting into the presence of God. Oh, y'all hear me on tonight. He, 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 he made up in his mind, amen, that, that he's going to build and he's going to put in work, y'all. He's going to build an altar uh, in order for him uh, to communicate with God. Because if you want to resolve conflict the proper way, you have to seek help from above. Look at Isaac. Uh, he's really admitting, God, I can't do this on my own. Oh, I love it. Because if we were honest on tonight, a lot of us can't handle conflict on our own. In our own strength. <laughs> because sometimes our flesh gets the best of us. Oh, It's, Jesus, it's like Jesus said in, in the Garden of Gethsemane. He says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Oh, God, I want to do it. <laughs> I know the proper way to handle things, but my flesh gets weak. And so, God, in order for me to handle this conflict the proper way in, in my marriage, with my children, with, with the people on the job, with the people in the organization, a amen, with the folk out in the street, out in the stores, amen, God, in order for me to handle things the right way, uh, I need you to help me from above. 
Oh, how many people can acknowledge on tonight that you need God's help? <laughs> because you know in the flesh, hey, amen, you would say and do some stuff that you'll regret and that will end up making things worse. See, you got to understand who you represent. And see, if you go about things the wrong way, it takes the glory away from God. Yeah, it'll have people saying, I thought they were saved. <laughs> yeah, all that scripture they be quoting, all, all them songs they be singing. I, 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 I thought they knew the Lord. See, when we operate the wrong way, it takes the glory away from God. We want to make sure that God gets the glory out of the situation. To the point where people will come up to you, child, I can't believe that you didn't lay them out. I can't believe you didn't give them a piece of your mind. Oh, my God. How many people know that you have grown and developed over the years? That there was a time, amen, where you handled things in an ungodly way. But God grew you and developed you to the point where, where you had to recognize, amen, I don't want to take away the glory from God. I, I want him to be lifted up. I want him to be exalted. And so I got to handle this thing the way God has ordained. Isaac built an altar there, y'all. And it was there where he called on the name of the Lord. He said, God, if I'm going to do this the right way, I need you to give me what I need. Oh, my God, give, give me the words to say, and not just give me the word, but give me the right tone so that it comes across well, so that it's well received. Oh, fix my disposition. Yeah, because I don't want to come across the wrong way. Oh, oh, God, strengthen me and give me the patience that I need. In, in, in order for things to be handled the way you have ordained, it, if, if you want to resolve the conflict, amen, you got to do like Isaac, amen, you got to get in his presence. Ask the Lord to work on you. Oh, my God. David, I'm reminded, said, creating me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me. God, work on me from the inside out. Oh, my God. Yeah, work on my mouth, God. Yeah. And, and so we have to go to God in prayer. We, we have to spend some time communicating. Amen. Having a dialogue with God. Being honest with God. Yes, yes, we, 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 we have to open up this word, yeah, and allow this word to get in our spirit, a amen, so that, so that we'll be able, amen, to pray for our enemies, and that we'll be able to love them who despitefully use us. See, you, you can't do that in your own strength. It, it takes some help from above. Oh, my God. In, in order for you to pray for your enemies, for, for you to love them that despitefully use you. See, you need help from above because guess what? You got to go back to the job the next day. You got to go back to church, amen, the next Sunday. You, you got to be out in the streets the next day. You got to see those folk again, amen. And if they haven't changed, you need to make sure that you have been changed. Oh, my God, hear me on tonight. 
Amen. I told you before that some people are wired to clash with you, to disagree with you, to be hostile towards you. Oh, my God. And, and if it's in their DNA, a amen, you have to be prepared to deal with it and handle it in the proper way. So Isaac said, I'm going to build me an altar. Watch this. This is personal. I love it. He said, this is personal. I'm, I'm building this altar in order for me to get in the Lord's presence. Yeah, the God of covenant. I, I need his help in order for me to go about this the right way. Yeah, so he, he built an altar, and then he called on the name of the Lord. He didn't build the altar for nothing, amen. He called on the name uh, of the Lord. Yeah, there was a purpose for the altar. Yeah, it was personal, and, 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 and it was designed for him to receive what he needed from above in order to handle the situation that he was facing in the proper way. Yeah, he, 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 he prayed, he prayed to God. And then he took some time to hear from God. Oh my God, how, how, how should I handle this situation? Well, Isaac, amen. Uh, uh, the word says that, that what they mean for evil, amen, God uh, will mean it and take it and turn it for your good. <laughs> yes, that, that when you get in his word, you'll, you'll find that all things work together for the good of them who love him and who are the called according to to his purpose. You'll find out that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. You'll find out that sometimes you got to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle. Am I helping anybody on tonight? Come on, if you're being blessed on tonight, come on, wave at me. Amen. Write something on the screen. Whatever is blessing you on tonight, click that share button. Amen. Share this to your timeline on tonight. Look, look at Isaac. Isaac goes before the Lord. Hmm. I'm reminded of Jehoshaphat when he was facing hostility, had these armies coming against him. He was outnumbered. The odds weren't in his favor. And then the prophet came back to him and told him, the battle is not yours, but mine, says the Lord. Oh, that's how you got to handle conflict sometimes. See, you got, you got to spend some time uh, in your word. You got to spend some time with God in prayer. And God will show you how to handle your opposition. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm being blessed on tonight. Oh, my God. Sometimes you, 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 you got to be like Jesus and don't say a word. Yeah. See, see, he builds an altar and he calls on the name of the Lord. Look at it, y'all. You have to allow God to be at the center. Oh, uh, yeah. You have to allow God, let me say it again, to be at the center of the strife, of the hostility. How, how are we going to resolve the conflict? Let's put God, let's put the Lord at the center. Oh, my God. Let's come together in the Lord. <laughs> See, some of us, we want to be at the center. We think we know what's best. That's why we keep arguing back and forth because this person say they know what's best. But the other person on the opposite side, they're saying they know what's best. 
that, that, that person uh, on, 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 on that side of the table, they, they think they're right, but, but there's another person on the opposite side of the table, they feel like they're right. And, and so Isaac said, let's allow God to be at the center. <laughs> let's come together in the Lord and, and depend on the Lord to work this thing out for us. Oh, I love it. Oh, if we would just get out the center, if we would get out the middle, yeah, we mess it up when we, when we try to be at the center, when we try to be in the middle of it. Now, now you get out the middle and allow God to step in and be at the center of it. Oh, this is powerful on tonight. See, see, in, in the New Testament, the, the Lord is referred to as the chief cornerstone. L listen, listen to that. Understand, chief cornerstone. Yeah, what, you, if you understand building, amen, you understand that, that, that cornerstone, that chief cornerstone, cornerstone is used uh, to bind or bring two opposing sides together. Oh, uh, listen to that. Yeah, that's the chief cornerstone. That's the assignment of the chief cornerstone. The chief cornerstone, watch this, is at the center. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, right there. The corner of a building, a amen, is the chief cornerstone. And that chief cornerstone is there. Its assignment is to bind or bring two opposing sides together. Mm. Watch this. So that things can be stable. Oh, I love it on tonight. Yeah. So, so that the two opposing sides, guess what, can stay in its proper position. Uh, if, if you want to resolve the conflict, I dare you to allow the Lord to be the chief cornerstone. <laughs> See, we can't be the cornerstone because we're too unstable. See, the Lord is the rock. <laughs> yes, he's stable. You can lean on him. You can depend on us, but not us. We're unstable. We're shady. Yeah, we're, we're, we're one way one second, and we're, we're another way the next second. And that's why things crumble. That's why things get out of place. But if we allow him to be the chief cornerstone, he'll bring us together. Watch this. And he'll keep us together. You want your marriage to be solid? Allow him to be at the center. Oh, my God. You having problems with your children? Allow him to be at the center. You, you having problems in the ministry? Allow God to be the chief cornerstone. Oh, my God. The trouble we get into, we want to be chief. We want to be the head. We, we, we want to be in the middle of it. Talking about what we think. Oh, what, what, what we feel is best. No, let's, let's, let's seek help from above. Because if we don't get help from above, if he's not at the center Guess what? Things can crumble. And so Isaac, y'all, he built an altar and then he called on the name of the Lord. He, here's, here's the last thing we'll share on tonight. Man, I hope that the Lord is blessing you like he's blessing me. The, the last thing that we'll cover on tonight Amen. Then we have a few points that we'll cover on next week to round out 
this series. Amen. Uh, the, the last point, and, and this is uh, challenging. This is very challenging right here, this last point. The last point is that you have to acknowledge your wrongs. Y'all get that? You have to acknowledge your wrongs. Look at verse 26. It says, meanwhile, Abimelech had come to him from Gerar with Ahazab, his personal advisor, and Fakal, the commander of his forces. And Isaac asked them in verse number 27, why have you come to me since you were hostile to me and sent me away? And they answer, watch this, verse number 28. They answer, we saw clearly that the Lord was with you. So we said there ought to be a sworn agreement between us, between us and you. They said, let us make a treaty with you. Now, now look at, look at, look at the text, look at the text. Um, um, Abimelech, <coughs> who, who was jealous and envious of Isaac. He was the one who was hostile, asked Isaac to move away from them. He comes to Isaac along with his personal advisor, along with the commander of his forces. And, and I like this. Uh, uh, Isaac said, why have y'all come to me? Why you come to me after you were hostile to me and you sent me away? And look at what they said, all of them. Uh, Abimelech, his, his personal advisor, and, and the commander of his fort. Look at what they said. They said, we saw clearly that the Lord was with you. Oh, my God. See, see they're talking about um, squashing stuff. because they, they come down and say, let's make a treaty. <laughs> yeah, that no harm comes upon either side. Let's squash this. Let's nip this in the bud. But, but look at what they did. They, they, they said, we saw clearly that the Lord was with you. Even your haters, even your enemies recognize, amen, the hand of God on you. E e even your opposition recognize that the Lord is with you. There's something special about you. But I love the fact that they spoke up and they were honest and they said, we saw clearly that the Lord was with you. That's why we were hostile to you. That's why we ask you to move away. I told you before that some people are threatened by you. That's why you're getting all that hostility towards you. Some people are clashing with you because, amen, they really don't like themselves. Oh, my God. They, 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 they really are insecure. And so that's why they disagree with you. That's why they, they are always coming against you. That's why it's always discord. But, 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 but our point, based upon this Scripture is that you have to be willing to acknowledge your wrongs. They said, we asked you to move away. We were hostile to you. We, we had conflict with you be, because we saw that the Lord was with you. In other words, we, we were jealous of you. We were threatened by you. If you want to resolve the conflict, you have to be willing to admit your wrongs. Yeah, your mistakes, your bad decisions. You have to be willing to take ownership. 
You have to be willing to be accountable, take responsibility for the role that you played in the conflict. Oh, I love it. See, sometimes conflict is not resolved because everybody want to be right. Nobody hardly wants to admit their wrongs. <laughs> yeah, see, you got to put your ego aside. You always want to win. You always want to be right. You got to put your ego on the shelf. This takes a secure person. This takes a mature person in the Lord. In order for you to acknowledge your wrong, guess what? You got to have a sense of humility. Yeah, you got to be humble. That, that's our problem. Some of us, we got too much pride. Oh, my God. No, we... We watch this. We are too insecure to admit that we made a bad decision, that we played a role, amen, in the discord. Oh my God. But 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 not in this case, amen. Even the opposition, they they were mature enough to say, Isaac, man, look here. We we saw how the Lord had blessed you. You you sowed your seed in the land, and in the same year you reaped a hundredfold. And then you started digging in the valley, and 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 guess what? Well after well, the Lord blessed you with. And 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 we were threatened by you. We were, amen, insecure. Uh, we we were threatened by you. Uh, see, that opened the door, amen, uh, for peace. Yeah, we're going to deal with it on, on next week. That, that opened the door, amen, for, for the hostility to go away. Oh, my God. It, if you want your marriage healthy, if you want it strong, if you want it to get back on track, you, you have to acknowledge the role you played. You have to be mature enough to take responsibility for your actions, for your bad behavior. Oh, my God. A amen. You having problems with somebody at, at the job? Amen. You, you need to uh, uh, reflect on the situation and, 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 and see if there was anything that, that you did, a amen, that, 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 that played a role in the conflict and the discord. You got to be willing. Amen. Uh, to man up, to woman up, amen, watch this, and pull them aside. I love it, y'all, because they didn't do this in public, amen, it said they came to Isaac. Yeah, the person who they had hostility towards, yeah, they came to him. Yeah, sometimes you got to pull people aside, amen, uh, uh, make things private, go in, in a room somewhere by yourselves, a amen, and, and, and man up and woman up and admit and acknowledge the role that you played in the conflict. You, you got to be mature. Pastor, how do I become mature? How do I get that kind of humility? Yeah, you got to spend some time with the Lord. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. You, 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 you got to spend some time on your knees so that God, amen, can, can provide what you need in order for you uh, to admit and acknowledge where you went wrong. What you did. The decisions, the behavior. Uh, and, and watch this, it'll lead to peace. It will lead to you getting back on one accord. 
it will lead back, amen, to a healthy and vibrant relationship. See, that's the thing that you want at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, you, you want things to be back in order. You want the situation to be resolved, but as long as you're not willing to admit your mistakes, amen, you'll have unhealthy relationship. You won't be on one accord. There'll always be a clash. There'll always be disagreement. Jesus says, confess your sins. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Bible says that if we confess our sins, that if we acknowledge our wrongs, yeah, that, that, that if we confess our sins, mm, he's faithful and just to forgive us. Look at it, y'all. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That if we want to get things back in order, if we want to get back where we're supposed to be, we have to be willing to confess, acknowledge. We have to be mature enough to come before the Lord to admit our wrongs, our mistakes, our bad decisions. He said, if you do that, guess what? I'll forgive you. Oh, my God. Because you do know that sin separates you from God. Yeah, but, but, but if you confess, if you acknowledge, guess what? It'll bring you back into right relationship. Bring you back together with the Father. He said, confess your sins. I'm faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I'll make you whole. Uh, I'll get you back to the place where you belong. Oh, uh, yeah, and so on tonight, amen, there may be somebody out there who's unsaved. You don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your Savior. Oh, my God, you need to understand that he died for your sins. Yeah, yeah, those sins that separate you from the Lord. He died so that you could have right relationship. Yeah, he died so that you can have life and life more abundantly. He died. He shed his blood so that salvation could be yours. So if you're out there on tonight unsaved, this is your invitation to receive salvation. If that's you, confess yeah, him as Lord, as Savior, that he's the Son of God, that he died for your sins, that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Oh, my God, if that's you uh, in need of salvation, go to the inbox on the page. Give us your name. Give us your number, and we'll reach out to you real soon. Or if you're out there looking for a church home, amen, and God has been dealing with you about joining uh, this branch of Zion called Providence. You've been watching. You've been coming over and over again, and the Lord Amen has been speaking to your spirit that this is the house he wants you connected to. If you're looking for a church home, if I'm talking to you, go to the inbox on the page. Amen. Give us your name. Give us your number, and we'll be in touch with you real, real soon. Amen. Before we leave on tonight, amen, we want to give unto the Lord. Amen. If the Lord has blessed you on tonight, we want you to give. We want you uh, to bring an offering unto the Lord on tonight. Go to givelify.com. Go to givelify.com. Find Providence Baptist Church, 1331, 30th Street, Newport News, Virginia. Guess what? You can give online right now using your credit or your debit, debit card. Go there right now. If the Lord has blessed you on tonight, be a blessing to the ministry uh, on tonight. Be a blessing to the Lord. Or you can go to the Cash App. Amen. Information is right there on your screen. Amen. Go to the Cash App and put in dollar sign. PBC News Live. Once again, dollar sign. PBC News Live. 
Amen. We hope that you have been blessed on tonight. If you've been blessed, come on, wave at me. Yeah, write something on the screen. Let me know that the Lord has spoken to you on tonight. Amen. That you have been fed indeed with some bread uh, from heaven. And, and so we hope and pray, amen, that you'll share this to your timeline. Click that share button on your page. Don't forget, Sunday morning, amen, 10 o'clock, amen. We're celebrating 17 years as pastor and people, amen. We want everybody to be out. We'll have a small reception after the worship experience, amen. My sister, my friend will be here Amen. To share the gospel with us, Reverend Dr. Deborah Martin. And so we're looking for a great time in the Lord. Be in prayer right now. Amen. That God will bless us in an awesome way on this coming Sunday. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. May the Lord God make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you, give you peace. May he bless you in the city. May he bless you in the field. May he bless your going out and your coming in both now and forevermore. Let the church say amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.